In this video, I'm going to introduce the topic of post-translational sorting, and then we'll look at how proteins are targeted to one particular cellular location, the mitochondria. This image is showing us a generic plant cell, and I'm going to use it to show the subcellular locations where proteins are sorted through post-translational mechanisms. These are going to include chloroplasts, that's the site of photosynthesis, peroxisomes, that organelle is involved in lipid metabolism and also in detoxifying reactive oxygen species, and then there are mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell involved in a lot of metabolic reactions. One of the things that you might know is that two of these organelles, chloroplasts and mitochondria, contain their own DNA. However, the number of proteins that are encoded in mitochondrial DNA and chloroplast DNA is tiny compared to the number of proteins that are encoded in the nuclear DNA. For mitochondria, 99% of all of mitochondrial proteins are encoded by nuclear DNA. And what this means then is when the cell transcribes those genes and the messenger RNA is brought into the cytoplasm, there's going to have to be a way to assemble those proteins and then target them to the mitochondria. Another thing to bear in mind is that these organelles have more than one subcompartment. For example, we can divide mitochondrial proteins into four classes, those that are found in the outer mitochondrial membrane, the inner mitochondrial membrane, the intermembrane space, and the matrix. For mitochondria, the majority of proteins are found in the inner mitochondrial membrane. That's where the electron transport chain is located, and that's also a place where there are a lot of transporters, or in the matrix, where key metabolic pathways such as the TCA cycle occur. So we'll focus on those in this video. The last heads up I'll give you is that although there are several different targeting sequences, most mitochondrial proteins are going to use what's called a pre-sequence, and then work with the TOM and the TIM complexes. So again, as I'm talking about the pathway, I'll focus on those mechanisms. All right, let's begin. Post-translational sorting is one of the three major pathways for sorting proteins. The others would be the default pathway. This is how we assemble cytosolic proteins. A second major class are co-translationally sorted proteins, where the bulk of the protein synthesis is done on ribosomes attached to the endoplasmic reticulum, and those proteins then move through the cell through the endomembrane system. For post-translationally sorted proteins, this is what's going to happen. Like cytosolic proteins, these will be assembled on free ribosomes in the cytoplasm, but there'll be a difference. Unlike the cytosolic proteins that can fold into their 3D shape more or less as soon as they are made, Proteins that are destined for the mitochondria are kept from doing this. There are proteins present in the cytoplasm called molecular chaperones. Two common ones are HSP70 and HSP90. Those proteins associate with the length of the polypeptide as it's being produced, and they prevent it from folding into a 3D configuration. And we can see that here in this picture where the nascent polypeptides associated with the proteins. I move this over. So what's going to happen is that the protein will be synthesized and then released from the ribosome, and now we have our mitochondrial protein unfolded, and we need to get that into one of the targets in the cell. I'll remind you again that there are several different possible targets, the outer mitochondrial membrane, inner mitochondrial membrane, inner membrane space, and the matrix, and they'll use slightly different mechanisms in order to get to those destinations. Here I've blown up just a small section of the mitochondria to show you the two layers. With few exceptions, most mitochondrial proteins are going to enter the mitochondrion using a complex called TOM. TOM stands for the translocon at the outer mitochondrial membrane. It's a big protein. Part of it forms a pore-like structure. And then there are additional helper proteins, which are important for the function. Let's take a look at what happens. Here's a mitochondrial protein that has been produced in the cytoplasm. See how it's still associated with the HSP proteins. Some of the smaller TOM subunits are involved in binding to the protein. For example, one particular subunit is involved in recognizing the pre-sequence, a stretch of amino acids at the amino terminal of the mitochondrial proteins, while other subunits are involved in interacting with the HSP proteins. Together, these interactions will facilitate an exchange what will happen is that the TOM complex will be able to reorient the protein and begin by inserting that pre-sequence into the translocon. What happens next depends on which compartment within the mitochondrion the protein is destined for. 
Some proteins are destined to work in the intermembrane space. Here what happens is that the protein is translocated through Tom, and then in the intermembrane space, there's an enzyme that clips off the presequence that will subsequently be recycled and destroyed. And then there are other enzymes that will work with that unfolded protein and help it fold into its finished 3D configuration. Once the protein's adopted its three-dimensional shape, it's going to stay in the intermembrane space. It can't move backward through Tom. Other proteins are destined to work in the matrix. Let's look at their import. Well, once again, it begins with the binding of the protein to Tom in the outer membrane. Now, to get it into the matrix, we're going to need a second complex. This is called TIM, the translocon of the inner mitochondrial membrane. And there are two different forms of TIM. The one that's involved in making matrix proteins is TIM23. TIM23 is another big complex. It doesn't work by itself. There'll be a number of helper proteins that are associated with TIM that face the inner membrane space, and there are other proteins that are associated with the matrix. One important one is called PAM, presequence translocase associated import motor. PAM is going to work together with the matrix HSP and use energy from ATP in order to help move the protein all the way into the matrix. Here's what happens. Some of the proteins associated with TIM23 can bind the signal sequence, and that then will allow it to be transferred from TOM to TIM23. Once it binds to TIM23, this allows PAM to undergo a conformational change, recruiting the matrix HSP to the complex. And then, using the energy from ATP, the protein is pulled through the TIM23 complex into the matrix. This movement of the protein into the matrix also relies on the proton motive force. Remember that mitochondria are establishing a proton gradient, so it's more negative inside the matrix than it is in the inner membrane space. This helps with the transport. And in fact, the TIM23 PAM complex is also associated with subunits in the electron transport chain that probably help maintain this proton gradient in order to facilitate this movement. Once inside the matrix, we're ready to go and process the protein further. An enzyme called matrix presequence protease clips off and destroys the presequence. The protein then can be folded using the help of other enzymes to adopt its 3D configuration. And now we've got a finished matrix protein. The last group of mitochondrial proteins that I want to talk about are going to be ones that work in the inner membrane. These will also enter the mitochondrion using the TOM complex. This process involves the other TIM, TIM22. It's also a translocon of the inner mitochondrial membrane. It's a different protein, though. Like the other translocons we've seen, there'll be helper proteins that are associated with it. Proteins that are destined to work in the inner mitochondrial membrane, and this includes some important ones like players in the electron transport chain and the FOF1 ATP synthase, have two signal sequences. They have the presequence that will bring them to Tom in the outer mitochondrial membrane, and then a second hydrophobic domain that will serve as an anchor within the membrane. What happens with these proteins is that they associate with Tom and then are transferred to TIM22 in the inner mitochondrial membrane. As the transfer is occurring, when we reach that internal signal sequence, the hydrophobic one, TIM22 will open up and the protein's allowed to move laterally out into the inner mitochondrial membrane. Once there, an enzyme can clip off the presequence, leaving us with the functional version of the protein. And I'll say that although I've only drawn a single membrane spanning domain here, this is the same mechanism that's used for other multi-pass membrane proteins. It enters through TOM and TIM22 and then gets inserted. In this video, I've shown you how the cell can deliver proteins to three mitochondrial compartments, the inner membrane space, the matrix, and the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, there are proteins that use other mechanisms in order to reach their targets. For example, there's another mechanism that can insert proteins into the outer mitochondrial membrane. And although all the examples I've given you have used the TOM complex in order to enter the mitochondrion, there are some proteins that enter through other mechanisms. I think, however, what I've told you has given you a good introduction into how proteins can be targeted to mitochondria.
and it will also provide the foundation so if you decide you do want to learn more about other mechanisms, you'll be able to pick up a review or a textbook and fill yourself in on those variations.